Hello Internet! Okay, so as you may have guessed from the title of this video, I'm finally going to be teaching you guys how to do expansions. It's something that I've been asked about quite a few times, and it's something that I've been wanting to do a video to show you guys how to do, but I haven't had video capabilities, or I haven't known how to edit videos. But now I have those things, and I have a YouTube channel, and you get to learn things. If you don't know what an expansion is already, basically what happens is I take a photo, and then I take photos around the photo, all around, and put those all together, and it makes one big photo. So you may be thinking, that sounds like a lot of work, why would anyone want to do that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First reason is because it builds up resolution. So if you think of it like a puzzle, we'll say, um, so you have your little puzzle piece, and if you try and print your entire picture on that, let's say you're printing Mount Rushmore, you're going to put Mount Rushmore on a puzzle. But if you try and print that picture on just one tiny little puzzle piece, you're not going to be able to see that unless you have like a microscope or something. So if you like take your picture of Mount Rushmore, and you put it on a whole bunch of little puzzle pieces, so each little puzzle piece only has like maybe George Washington's nose or something, and you put those all together, then you have an entire Mount Rushmore and it's big. That's basically what we're doing, except it's, yeah, it's kind of like a puzzle, but not a puzzle or Mount Rushmore. You can do it with Mount Rushmore if you want, but we're not doing that. The second reason is because of your depth of field. As you most likely know, usually it's your aperture which you use to control your depth of field. A wider aperture, so which is a lower number, like 1.4, which I'm using now, gives you a much shallower depth of field, which is what causes all this beautiful little bokeh leaf stuff going on in the background. But along with that, there are a few other factors which will control your depth of field, such as your sensor size, and your focal distance. Right now I'm still at the same 1.4, but since I'm focused at a further point, there's a lot less shallow depth of field, and you can see all this beautiful stuff around me, and leaves and twigs and stuff, and it's less shallow. So if we can take the same photo with a shorter focal distance, that means we can create a shallower depth of field, and we get all this fun blurriness, and things can go out of focus, and into focus, and out of focus, and it's a lot of fun. As you may have also noticed from the title of this video, this is only part one of two. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the whole shooting and setting up of the photos. And in the second part, I will show you how to do the editing and putting things together and all that sort of magic. Okay, so I'm changed into my cloak because I don't know what I'm shooting. I just want to wear a cloak, really. So that's happening. I've got my camera set up on the tripod because I'm doing this as a self-portrait. You can do it as just a regular portrait of someone else as well, and you don't need the tripod, and you can probably skip the first couple steps that I'm going to be explaining uh, right about now. Okay, so if you're doing this as a self-portrait, usually the one part that people have the most problems with or find the most confusing is figuring out how to do your focus. I'm going to be showing you two ways, one using a remote and one using a 10 second timer on the camera. So let's start with using your remote. Always keep your remote in a plastic bag because it makes it easier to find and it protects it from water and rain and all that fun stuff. Okay, so first going to be shooting with the remote. I got my camera set to autofocus so that when I'm out there I can hit the shutter and the camera will focus on me. I got my focal point set to the upper third area where my head's about to be. And I'm just basically going to go over there, stand in front of the camera and hit the shutter. Fairly simple. And then we just come back and check to make sure we're looking in the right place with the camera, that I'm standing in the right place. Okay, so once you get your initial photos and you're in the frame and it's mostly focusing on you, you have a couple of options. Um, one, you can just leave it in autofocus and hope that every time you're taking the photo of yourself that you're in the right place to get the focal point sensor on the right area, usually your head. Um, you can switch it to manual focus if you are fairly confident you're going to be in that exact same space every time or you can switch it to manual focus and adjust the focus. Um, like right now I'm finding it's focusing a lot just on the trees behind me. So I'm just going to switch it over to manual focus and bring it just a little bit closer and I should be good. So now I'm just going to go and test to make sure I got that right. Since I think I know just about where I'm doing and I'm getting this right, I'm going to be doing the two second timer and just throwing my remote so that's not in the shot, and because it's in the plastic bag, I'll be able to find it easier. So, two seconds, throw it. You check, it's a lot of back and forth to the camera, really. Okay, so I just made a minor adjustment, and I'm just gonna go back and do a couple more just to make sure I got good central photo. Guys, I found a mint! So good, okay. Um, right, photo. So 
those look good, and I actually got my focus really well. So I'm going to call those good. Now I'll show you how I would do it theoretically if I were doing 10 second timer. It's really simple actually now that I've done this. Uh, basically all I'm going to do is change my camera to the 10 second timer. Um, if I didn't already have my camera focused, I would try and guess and focus about where I was going to be. Or another option is if you have a spare tripod or there's a stick like right where you're going to be. Or if you have a chair or a stool or something, you put something there where you're going to be focus on that and then you go there and move the stool. Um, I usually end up doing guess and check or I focus on a spot on the ground and then move it and then because things are a little bit wonky I have to adjust it. But that's usually the easiest way for me. So let's do this. Okay, so just to make this more fun, I got I changed my focus a bit, so now I'll have to do the whole guess and check thing. So I got on my 10 second timer, so I'm just gonna hit it and run over there, stand there basically and like click the picture then come back and see where I need to adjust my focus. So, 10 seconds and go! In this shot that my focal plane is a bit behind me so I need to bring it forward. I'm going to do a little bit of an adjustment and hit 10 seconds and go again. Probably help if I actually hit the shutter. There we go. Come back and we look at it. Looks like I brought it just a little bit too close, so I'm just gonna put it back just a little bit. And third time's a charm. Check it out. And it's pretty much perfect because we were doing it how we just did it with the 10 second timer, it's already in manual focus. But if you were doing it with your remote, you would want to change it to autofocus or to from autofocus to manual focus now. Once you got your main shot of you and you're satisfied, um, this is going to prevent the focus from changing on its own when we move the camera around. So now that we got the main shot, we're going to do the actual expansion part. So now when it comes to the actual expanding part, this is something that pretty much everyone has their own way of doing it. I personally like to do it very systematically. I'll start from the center, go. I usually go left do a couple images, do right, do a couple images, then go up and do it, and then down and do it. And this is primarily so that in Photoshop I will know where everything goes, it's easy to find stuff, and I can be fairly certain that I'm not missing anything in the photo. So I'm just going to take a photo of where I just was, I haven't moved the camera or anything, and this is just going to ensure that I have a good image of the background if I ever need to uh, clone something out or cover something up in the main image. Uh, so now I'm going to memorize it, basically what this image looks like. So there's a log in the bottom. I'll be putting these images up right here, I think, if I can figure out how to do that. Um, so I'm just going to know where that is. And I'm going to look and see, find a, basically something interesting on the left side of the image. So right now I'm seeing just a few of these little branches. So I'm going to just move the camera straight over to the side. This is why I like three-way pan heads is because I can just move along this way smoothly. I'm just going to move it. So, so I'm moving it so those twigs I just picked out that were on the left side are now on the right side of my camera. So I know that when I'm putting them together those twigs are going to overlap and there's not going to be this gap between the two photos. And then I'm just going to pick another spot on the left side of the camera and move it so that it is now on the right side but still on frame. So right now just picking a leaf hanging on the tree and moving it so that leaf is on the right side. And snap a picture. And usually, depending on how big you want to go, you can do more. I usually, just for a simple one, I'll do two on each side and then I'll go up one and down one. So now I'm going to come back to the middle. This is why I memorized what was in the middle, where that log was. And this time I'll pick a point that's on the right side and put that on the left. So I'm just going to look at a leaf move it, click, find another leaf, actually in this case it's going to be a branch, move it, click, and then we bring it back to the middle. And then I'm just going to pick a point on the top and bring that to the bottom. And then we just repeat, click there, Pick a point on the right, put it on the left, or on the left, put it on the right. Bring it back to the very middle. And we go down. 
quick. And to the sides. And if you're worried about not getting enough overlap, it's always better to get too much overlap than not enough overlap because that just makes it a whole mess. And yeah, it's just that easy as long as you pick a point that was in the previous photograph and move it so that's still in frame but on the other side, then you'll be golden. And that's how I shoot an expansion. Be sure to tune in for part two where I'm going to show you how to actually put everything together. So that means you should probably subscribe to me now so that you'll actually get that video and you won't be left with just random photos that you took from this video and you don't know how to put them together subscribe. As always, please leave a comment down below letting me know if you understood everything, if you didn't understand anything, if you didn't understand some things, but not other things, let me know which things those are, or just write your favorite short story. No, don't write a short story, write, write something funny in the comments, making a laugh. You may have to wait for part two to be able to actually finish a photo using this, but if you are able to mess around in Photoshop and figure it out magically, Please social media me your results and I'll look at them and I'll share them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media. And be sure to give the video a thumbs up so that I know that you actually liked it and that you're excited for part two. This is a dance. Okay, bye. not other things, or tell me your favorite animal. I like bunnies a lot. <laughs> Some things, but not other things. If you have a personal issue you need to discuss, um, actually don't discuss that with me. I'm not good at those things. Excited for part two! Oh, I promise I'm never going to go that high again. To do, but I haven't had video equipment, and I haven't known, had my um, 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 words. I just suck at speaking. I don't know if you guys realize that. I'm just not good. Haters gonna hate.